So today I will go through how to set up a redundant network and not only that, we will actually build two separate uh, networks, one for SoundGrid and one for, well, basically any other stuff like uh, wireless workbench, like uh, mix mirror or, well, uh, anything you want really. So yeah, let's go. So first of all, let's go through what we will accomplish here today. So we will have uh, one virtual uh, network, uh, a VLAN for all sound grid stuff. So these are the pink cables going into the to the pink ports over here. This is the front of the house. This is the stage. So these pink ones are stuff connected to the sound grid network up on the stage. This one is the host connected at front of house. I will connect another computer as well for tracking. Uh, then we will have all the white cables going into the white ports. These are control stuff. So in this case, it's a second network from the host going into the, uh, the router wireless out to the, uh, to the app. I will also connect my computer at front of house to control uh, wireless workbench uh, amps and stuff. And all of these will be connected up on stage uh, in these white uh, outlets. Then we have these black cables. These are uh, the, the cables connecting front of house to the stage. And uh, uh, the, the idea is that if one of them fails, the other one will uh, take over. So this is the redundancy. And since I use waves, I call these pink ones uh, sound grid, but it could of course be uh, Dante or uh, AES or v w whatever. It's just two different networks. So uh, all pink is one net network, all white is another network and uh, you can put whatever you want in, uh, in, in each. And since we are using virtual networks, VLANs, both of these networks go through the same cable up to the stage uh, and the reason we have two uh, cables is just for redundancy so that's the goal now let's start from the beginning all right so first a quick disclaimer i basically don't know anything about networking i just learned enough to set all of this up and uh, if you are new to all of this just follow along and and follow all, all of these steps and you will be able to to uh, to set all of this up. All right, let's start with the switches. These are managed switches as opposed to dumb switches like these. With this, you can't do any configuration. What you put in uh, comes out basically. So these are great if you just want to con connect a lot of stuff to the same network, but that's not what we're doing today. So let's get rid of this one. So with these switches, we can program uh, any port to do anything we, we want. And for reasons I will not go into today, I would recommend buying switches that support 2.5 uh, gigabit. Like this one, this is the Netgear uh, MS-108EUP. This uh, seems to be working uh, great with the, with the SoundGrid uh, system. Uh, that said, I have one of these and one uh, switch that it's a managed switch but it, it's just uh, one gigabit and the reason is that uh, on stage I need a lot of, of ports and a switch with the 2.5 gigabit speed with all of these ports it's just too expensive I could not afford a, a switch like that uh, and because of that this is a uh, one gigabit switch this one is a 2.5 gigabit switch and I went for Netgear uh, switches uh, I guess just about any brand will work all right we have the switches uh, if you're using Netgear I would suggest downloading the Netgear discovery tool and also the the latest firmware for uh, for e each of the of the switches and since you will do basically the same setup uh, on, on both of these, uh, let's just get rid of this one and focus on this one. Uh, right now, this one is in factory default, so we will start from the absolute be beginning. All right, I will use a, uh, a Mac to do all of this. You could, of course, use a, a PC as well. Uh, so, uh, all right, uh, a dongle, since it's Mac, we always need a dongle. and. Let's not connect this 
just yet let's do some uh, setups in the uh, in the in the mac first of all let's turn off the wi-fi uh, so we are sure that we are using uh, the 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 wired network and actually let's just uh, connect this one let's go to system settings and then network and this is the the dongle uh, connected and uh, if you are doing this for the first time, uh, you are probably using uh, DHCP, which we will not do. So let's click details, go to uh, this tab and select manually. Uh, now we will select the uh, IP address that will be used for this computer. So let's go with 192.168.1. No, sorry, dot zero dot, uh, let's say 200. This is just used right now to connect to, to the switch for the first time. Uh, so we will go back and change this in just uh, a while. Let's go for this just now. Let's select OK. And now let's start the, uh, the Netgear Discovery tool. So let's start the search and uh, then just wait. All right, there is. Let's go to the admin page and the password is password. And if you are using something else than Netgear, it might be another password, but for Netgear, it's password. We have to select a new password and we will obviously go with well, I might not just tell you. Here we go, change password. And then we have to log in again with the new uh, password. All right, so this is the setup page for the switch. So the first thing uh, you want to do is to update the firmware. You will do this in settings and firmware. I actually have the latest firmware, but uh, here you would uh, choose the file that you downloaded before you started all of this and uh, just uh, update the, the whole thing. But this is up to date, so let's move on. So let's start with assigning the IP address uh, for this one. And it would make sense to have a list with uh, the IP address for all of you, your uh, devices. So it's, it's easy to find. This one, and I have written it down here, will be, uh, let's see, let's go to IP address and let's change this one from DHCP to uh, one two one six eight, and we will use dot one dot two three nine, and the subnet mask will be two five five two five five zero dot zero, and the gateway way will be one nine two one six eight dot one dot one. And I will not try to explain why we are using these exact numbers. So just trust me, uh, do like this and it will work. Let's press apply. And now we can see that the new uh, fixed IP address is 192.168.1.239. Perfect. Okay, so right now this switch is basically just as the DOM switch. Uh, everything is just the same network and, and uh, we haven't really done uh, anything but changed the IP address for, for the, the switch. So uh, first of all, let's have a plan of what we are going to accomplish here. So we are going to have one uh, VLAN for the sound grid uh, and I will be using port uh, three, four and five for the sound grid network. Then we will have the control network and I will use uh, 6, 7 and 8. Then we will have the, the trunk port going from, from the house up to the stage uh, and that will be uh, port 1 and 2. Let's set up the VLANs. So let's go to uh, configure VLAN with uh, access and trunk mode. Let's activate this one. 
So right now it's only one VLAN and it's assigned to all of the ports. So let's actually uh, create one more. So we just take any here and just add VLAN. We will call this one sound grid and we have to give it an ID number, which can be basically anything. So let's go with 10 and apply. And now we have our two VLANs, so we have the the default and then the, the sound grid. Now we just need to assign all of this to the different ports. So port 1 is actually going to be the trunk port and uh, port 2 as well. Then port 3 will be the sound grid, 4 sound grid as well, and 5 sound grid. And the last three will be the, the default uh, VLAN. So let's press save. All right now we need to assign the uh, link aggregation groups. And this is really what makes this uh, re redundant because uh, what this does is basically treat both of these ports or both of these cables as one. So basically two cables work as one, uh, giving you twice the capacity in, in the network. But if, if one of them dies, you still have the, the other one. So let's select uh, port one and two and enable the uh, lag one. Let's hit apply. Okay, we're getting there. Let's go to the quality of service tab. And this is basically a way to prioritize things higher or lower. And in our case, the sound grid network needs to have the, the highest priority. If the control network needs to wait a few milliseconds uh, because of, of high traffic, we will not really notice anything. If the sound grid network were to wait a few milliseconds we absolutely will 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 know it so let's set up uh, all of this so this is on the qs tab so let's just uh, switch this to uh, port based continue and then we can uh, assign port one and two to the highest uh, this is the the link between uh, front of house and stage. Also uh, the sound grid network, let's have this uh, at the highest uh, like so and then the three last ones will be just uh, medium uh, priority. So let's hit apply. Next thing is to go to the diagnostics tab and make sure that loop prevention is turned on. It should be by default. And also make sure that, let's go to settings and power saving mode. Let's make sure that power saving is off. And while we're here, we could actually go to the uh, configuration file and, and create a backup file so uh, now that everything is set up you can save a file to the com computer so if you need to reset you can always uh, load the the backup file and in the description there's uh, links to uh, my backup files for both of these uh, so you can download those and uh, go to restore and just upload uh, the files uh, directly into your switches and uh, by doing so you've just wasted about 20 minutes or so watching this video because that will be the the, the, the easiest way of, of doing things but uh, yeah okay let's connect everything back together let's start on the front of house side of things so we have the cable coming from the the host Let's get this into one of the sound grid networks. Then we have the tracking computer, uh, which is not turned on, but let's connect it anyways. Then we have the uh, second network from the host computer for the, the iPad app. So this will be on the control network, like so. And then we have the the cables connecting front of house with the stage. So let's connect both of these like 
like so. These run up to the stage and here we go. So let's use this one and this one. Uh, then we have the router uh, for everything wireless. Uh, so let's connect this one to the control network. Like so. Then we have the Ionic box. Obviously to the sound grid network. And then I have a server somewhere and this is the cable coming from the server. Like so. So uh, now everything should work. Let's have a look. Yes, we have the uh, Ionic, we have the server and uh, we have no errors. We have the remote where, uh, let's see, where my I iPad is connected. And uh, let's disconnect one of these cables going between the front of house and stage. And hopefully nothing happens. And nothing happened. Perfect. Let's put this back and let's remove the other one. Just give it a second to to make sure that, that everything works. Let's remove this one and still nothing happens. And obviously if we remove both of them, uh, we lose the connection between the front of house and the stage. Awesome. So in theory, it's as easy as that. Obviously, I tested everything before I made this this video to make sure that it actually works, but it, it does. And uh, it's, of course, a million things that can go wrong. So if you're having issues, leave a comment and uh, maybe I can, can help or maybe someone else can, can help. Uh, perhaps someone who actually knows a thing or two about uh, all of this. Alright, thanks for watching, take care.